Hi, this is Nelson Peña from IMC International, partnering with Ucoscopy Space Financial TV in Geneva. Welcome to Let's Talk About Business. Today I have a very special guest from Turkey, uh, Murat, uh, who is the country manager and regional director of this region. Hi Murat, how are you doing? I'm very well, Nelson. Uh, thanks a lot. Happy to be with you here. Um, Murat, I'm just thinking, talking with you um, about Istanbul, that Istanbul has not only a superb and great bridge between the European and um, Asian side, but generally Turkey as a country, you always have been considered as the bridge between Occident and Orient. How do you evaluate this statement from an economic and um, business point of view? Is it still correct or I'm wrong? <laughs> it's uh, really correct. Nelson Turkey is a, clearly uh, a key economic leader in the region, having regional power and extremely well connected in all the world. Its economic and uh, political influence in the region and around the Caucasian zone is uh, very strong, as we all know. Uh, historically, Turkey has been reliant on the developed economies for a significant portion uh, of its trade and uh, investment. Uh, we can see the proximity and strategic importance of Turkey in the graph. First of all, uh, with its geopolitical position, Turkey has always been a bridge in commercial life, connecting Middle East and uh, Middle Asia to each other, from the history up to this date. Thanks to the trade routes on which it's located and the wealth it has, today, both with the economic opportunities it provides and with the infra infrastructure advantages of the region, it's a country that offers lots of opportunities to the investors. Besides Anatolia being a cultural center in which tolerance and respect come to the fore, has always been an attractive geography for foreign investors. Turkey has a growing trend similar as in uh, classic emerging countries. It attracts lots of investors from Europe, Asia, and uh, being a Muslim country, Turkey attracts lots of investors also from the Middle East automobiles, textiles, chemicals, steels, and food are the uh, living export industries of Turkey. It also emphasizes Turkey's importance technologically and socially, not just the country's strategic importance. And on the other hand, we shouldn't forget that Turkey is also a strong investor. Preparing myself, uh, Murat, uh, to this uh, interview and meeting with you, I have learned that the Turkish economy uh, has grown significantly since the country emerged from 2010, sorry, 2001 financial crisis, you had a very severe financial crisis. And um, between 2002 and 2008, your GDP experienced an extremely high average growth of 5.8%. Compare, compare, and this is important to 1.8% of the European Union. And um, where is Turkey, or what does Turkey make different uh, and better than most European countries over the last 10 years, and uh, what it is today? Uh, Nelson, we can say that Turkey is a prominent country uh, in economic and financial senses with economic and financial moves. Especially since the beginning of 2000s, its fairer economic performance and high growth figures of the economy in the last three years to finance policies based on consistent and strong banking system supported by the reforms that have been ongoing since the beginning of 2000s. Uh, as it can be seen uh, from the graph two, we can see on the graph two average annual, annual real GDP growth uh, between 2002 and 2012. In the prominent increase in rapid growth of Turkey's economy, especially against European economies at the point which after global crisis in 2009, we observed the reforms ensuring economic infrastructure and the dynamic and well-educated young population that it against aging European economy, besides the regulations such as especially financial discipline and consistent monetary policy. Along with all these developments, lots of reforms and changes have been brought to life in Turkey in the last decade with the positive contribution of the European Union membership process and many arrangements and changes have been made related to the areas such as especially the liberalization of Turkey's economy, focusing on private sector, increasing the resistance with efficiency in finance 
uh, and building social security system on a solid, uh, solid ground, Nelson. Some economists, um, Murat, are considering Turkey as the brick of Europe. That means you are together the Chinese, the Indian, and the Brazilians and the Russians. So you are a huge, uh, very interesting animal uh, for us here, uh, Europeans. Um, others are predicting that um, potentially by 2050, uh, Turkey will become the 10th largest economy. Uh, is the Turkish empire back? Um, uh, what do you think? Uh, Nelson, empire, uh, empire, I think it may be more accurate to say that uh, Turkey has begun to use its own values and resources more. Uh, Nelson, as we know, in recent years, Turkey, uh, the next European powerhouse, has overcome a series of political and economic challenges. But the Turkish economy on remarkable performance with a steady growth over the last 12 years. A sound microeconomic strategy in combination with prudent fiscal policies and major structural reforms in effect since 2002 has integrated the Turkish economy into the globalized world while transforming the country into, the, uh, into one of the major recipients of uh, FDI in its region. Moreover, this success has encouraged experts and international institutions to make confident projections about Turkey's economic future. For example, according to the OECD, Turkey is expected to be the fastest growing uh, economy of the OECD members during 2012 and 2017, with an annual average growth rate of 5.2%, as can be seen on graph 3. Uh, Finally, uh, the world has realized that the concept of emerging markets is not limiting, limited to the four large BRIC economies. Turkey, along with the others, such as Indonesia, Vietnam and Mexico, has all the fundamental economic characteristics to lead the next wave of rapid growth markets. In the context of estimates, if the world's economic growth emerges under the leadership of uh, the Developing market economies, again, like it is today, we can say that uh, E7 economies will leave behind G7 economies in 2032 at the latest. Listening to you, uh, I'm just impressed about the figures, about the trends and how you are positioning uh, Turkey. Um, let me ask you, what is the reality in your country? Okay, I'm not talking about to economists. If I will go and visit 10 companies in Izmir, Ankara, or in Istanbul and talk to them, uh, what kind of challenges uh, do you see for a standard SMB doing business uh, and expanding their activities? What are the, I would say, the, the concerns of a CEO or a business owner for a mid-sized business in Turkey? And what are the segments in industries uh, which are doing well? Um, we can say that the most important differences of Turkish SMEs are that they address a, to a huge domestic market in a rapidly growing economic value. Besides with the supports of high quality, the reliable supplier positions and quality perception in European Union countries to which they start to export of much bigger amounts, especially after the removal of customs wall in 1996. However, this process also brings a number of challenges. Market size creates a, high comp a highly competitive environment along with it. Uh, besides, we can say that it is needed to long-term plans and uh, arrangements in terms of investments and incentives, Nelson. European SMEs are also in need of investments in foreign countries, but they cannot afford to go to China. Uh, instead, they want to come to Turkey. In this sense, as a growth strategy of SMEs may seek, the idea that Turkey may be a production base for Europe should never be ignored. Murat, um, I remember the last time I have been in Istanbul, I was talking with a high level officer of your um, government, and he said to me that uh, their intention is really to create in the Anatolian side a kind of second Dubai over the next 10 years. So there's a huge effort to make Istanbul the Anatolian side as a business and financial and service center. 
Um, in my opinion, Jurgen Vanneman is really, I would say, uh, regulated uh, and, and sponsoring this development. From a practical point of view, I'm talking now about uh, the, uh, the practical economy, the, the companies getting into Istanbul. What are the efforts besides the fiscal and, and, and taxation side? What is the government doing to attract investors? On the one hand, on the other side, also supporting Turkish companies getting out of Turkey because you are in a strategic position uh, towards the, the, the Mideast, uh, towards the Caucasian area, uh, towards the, uh, I would say, the ethnical Turkish, um, uh, ethnical uh, countries around you. So what exactly is your, uh, is your government doing for this? Yeah, I think except for the reforms and legal regulations that have been implemented to the present in terms of foreign investors operating in Turkey, the studies that the Turkish government has been conducting on the subjects of uh, increasing informal economy and current investment and uh, research and development incentives on a sectoral basis that, as we previously mentioned, are uh, important uh, to enhance the attraction of the country in the eyes of investors. In this sense, I think the next step of Turkey must be making additional regulations in textual sense to prevent informal economy and supporting specialization and differentiation with the incentives in the sector indicated on the subject of producing intermediate goods. Steps performed by the current political power in order to increase foreign investors have provided Turkey to rise the leadership in the region in foreign direct investment figures today. And we can also expect that Turkey's new investment incentive scheme and continued reform program to boost investors' confidence in the country further and quicken its development into a regional and global hub for operations, Nancy. Murat, from a practical point of view, um, as a country manager and supporting us, a business getting established, Obviously, we can also uh, say what are re the recommendations, okay? What are the recommendations for, for business to get established? On the other side, sometimes, and this has more value, what should be avoid? What should be avoid a, as a company wishing and to get into Turkey? Uh, Nelson, I think there is no list of the ones to be especially avoided in Turkey. But uh, accompanied by my own experiences, uh, I can comfortably say that Whenever you go in the world, uh, the common thing required to be avoided is a uh, global organization in position that forget the uh, values forming that country on which localization and investment are made and neglecting special business methods. Uh, of course, I can make some suggestions over the cultural common points. Firstly, it's clear that in Turkey, we have common features with Western uh, society uh, in terms of uh, urban living level, we can say that the trade is shaped according to the basic rules uh, of the business life in the context of input market conditions. We can say that uh, in the rural uh, areas, the business environment is being conducted according to the traditional rules mostly. Turkish businessmen dominate the modern Western business practices and they apply them in business life. In in order to be successful in business life in Turkey, hierarchy and respect is very important uh, in a similar manner with Turkish uh, culture. In this sense, we can say that there is a business culture based on hierarchy. Decisions are always required to be made by senior people, but we culture comes before I culture in Turkey. And I can we easily say that we have a conservative business environment in the face of the calculated risks, even in the case of uncertainty. The relationship based uh, on reliability in terms of businessmen will always lead to more rapid progress of the business processes. Also, the feature of making face-to-face -face communication is a defining feature in also business life. Even the mutual relationships is at that level that mostly get ahead of written agreements, Nelson. As the country and the economy is growing more, that usually uh, merchant acquisition, corporate finance issues become more and more relevant. And uh, I have seen some statistics over the last two years 
that um, on the other side in Europe we had a kind of decline in aspects of transactions. Okay, now it's a bit better. Um, on the other side, you also in Turkey had a very strong demand for um, capital transactions. How important is the merchant acquisition corporate finance sector and what kind of uh, um, sectors are applying for these transactions and what is more or less the volume? What is your experience, observations? In order to mention about the current investment opportunities in Turkey, first of all, it should be uh, reminded that in which conditions Turkey is a prominent country, economy. Turkey is uh, in a very highlighted position, especially with a rapidly growing institutionalized and successful economy large yard population, uh, cheap and qualified labor force, reliable investment environments, improved market conditions, higher transport facilities, low taxes and incentives, developed financial market and uh, the strong banking sector, highly developed transportation infrastructure, the highest risk reward ratios to foreign investors and large and constantly evolving domestic market. Despite the ill effects uh, of the global economic recession, Turkey has managed to record an uh, uh, unprecedented uh, number of M&A activity in the year uh, 2013. Uh, 336 M&A transactions took place in 2013, which is the country's historical height. The transactions have generated uh, a 20 billion United States dollars. Such success of Turkish economy and uh, business community has been even further accentuated by the fact that 2013 has not been a good year for the M&A activities in the world, especially the energy sector, especially uh, in terms of natural resources, is leading the M&A transactions in Turkey in terms of values, volumes involved with a, a total transaction of 36. Considering under these conditions, the other important major investment opportunity in Turkey is uh, e-commerce and uh, internet markets in terms of population average. In addition, we can say that uh, health and medical tourism that have been taking increasing uh, investment and rapidly growing in recent years, and food, construction, finance and service sectors that have certain demands constantly in terms of population size are uh, generally leading sectors. And uh, Turkey's privatization plans for state-run uh, energy generation plans and distribution firms, banks, highways and bridges and ports, as well as the national lottery uh, have to be underlined, Nelson. The impressive growth of the Turkish M&A volumes has already attracted uh, attention in overseas, uh, as you mentioned before. Turkey has been named as one of the magnificent seven emerging countries for M&A activities. Murat, um, being the, uh, the leader in our region in Turkey, um, what kind of activities are you providing to potential investors to do business and what kind of services are requested most? Uh, firstly, we must stress that IMC Turkey bears the role of administrative center and invoicing hub, not only for Turkey, but also for the countries around, and offers the services to the investors in the entire region and with the perception of 330 degrees. IMC provides a uniquely flexible combination of executive consultancy services, adding measurable returns and real value or clients' uh, business. Our customers benefit from the experience and hands-on skills of our senior level partners. We coordinate these services using practice groups or industry clusters, focused on developing solutions to satisfy specific requirements of our customers, no matter on which side they are, buyer or seller. We provide solid corporate finance services, including mergers and acquisition activities, from start to finish, like creation of acquisition model, market search, monitoring, uh, monitoring of incentives, grants and other investment supports, financial analysis, preliminary due diligence, company evaluation, negotiation of terms, uh, documents and contracts, 
management and control of entire process, which is so crucial to a successful transaction, closing and finally managing the adaptation processes. Uh, IMC is also uh, able to be uh, able to contribute to their success with a variety of services from a true company assessment and strategic planning to implementation support and business coaching to board leadership. They choose, uh, I mean, our clients choose uh, the level of our involvements to suit their particular situation and the challenges. And our main corporate governance services are business assessment and fitness test, recommendations and pet finding, coaching through implementation, interim management, intermediation, functioning as an independent board member, and project related assignments. And um, finally, if you mention about the advisory services that are demanded by our customers, mostly are. Uh, submissions and evaluation of alternative investment proposals, monitoring of incentives, grants, and other investment supports, making the feasibility and business plan of the projects, the organization uh, of the due diligence, and all other M&A processes, implementation for the follow-up in term period of M&A projects, corporate checkup, specific advisory, and interim management. I think I can uh, summarize uh, all the services that we give in Turkey, Nelson. Okay, very good. Um, Murat, I would like to thank you. It has been a, a very insightful uh, spot from your side. I have learned some parts about um, Istanbul, uh, Istanbul and Turkey in general and uh, how to do business, what should be avoided in order to be successful. And thanks a lot for your time. It has been very precious. Thank you very much. It, uh, I've been very pleased to be here. It was my pleasure. Thank you, Nelson. This was Inside Business talking about doing business in Turkey. Thanks for watching. See you next. Bye.